let's uh, go with how does generative ai work uh, so in this topic we are going to discuss about the different models of generative ai and uh, how they actually work and this is something a little technical so just hold your seats and listen to what Vishajit says very very uh, clearly uh, and uh, I mean yeah, very very clearly and he I, I'm going to push him to use some examples in order to make you understand that I know he does it uh, after uh, I mean poking sometimes uh, after poking multiple times but uh, I have already asked him to do so in today's webinar so just hold for that so let's start with number one so yeah, uh, before I, we talk about, you know, uh, how does generative AI work and the models of generative AI, I wanted to highlight that generative AI is not something which is just new. It has been there since 1960s. It is just the fact that it got a boom in 2014 with the introduction of GANs, Generative Adversarial Networks. So basically that was the place where generative AI got boom and it has been there since so long. So that was the one thing. And if I talk about, you know, what generative AI is, so like, I wanted to add on to what you have explained, like how does generative AI work? So let me give you a scenario, like how actually it works. So assume you have a person who haven't seen a cat ever before in life, and you want to, uh, you want him to write, or you want him to create an image of a cat. So you will give him thousand and thousand images of a cat. He will simply see and understand, okay, a cat is a being like this. He has whiskers like these. He has a tail like this. He has ears like, yeah. Uh, sorry? He and she. He and she. Oh, obviously. Sorry, mm -hmm. my bad. He and she. So yeah. that particular person, yeah. that particular person will, you know, simply understand each and every aspect that is there for a cat. And then that particular person would be able to generate an image or generate a, uh, I would say, picture of the cat. It might not be the same cat that he has seen from one of those images, but he has got an understanding of it. Like, okay, what does it look like? How does it look like? So it has captured the features of features a cat. Features of it. So basically, generative AI learns from patterns and relationships between the data and then create new content for us. So that is what generative AI is. Now, in generative AI, there are different, different models which helps us create and generate different, different type of contents. So the first one being that we will be discussing is GANs. Generative adversarial networks, as I talked, uh, as I said, like it was the one, right? Or for the, it was the one model which kind of gave a boom to the generative AI back in 2014. In GANs, what we have is it is a, it is a neural network where there are two neural networks. So assume there are two people playing together. They both know how a cat looks. Now one person is creating an image of a cat, and the other person is saying it does not look real. So there is a generator and there is a discriminator. So discriminator will keep on rejecting the images until a satisfactory real image, which we can believe is real is created. So that is GAN. There are two neural networks competing with each other and creating image. Once the discriminator says, yes, it looks real, it will produce that image. So that is GANs and GAN is primarily used for image and uh, image and video. Then we have transformer based models. So I, I just wanted to understand yeah. one thing. What exactly is a neural network? Okay. So neural network is a network where we have neurons, where we have multiple neurons and those neurons process the data and then produce an output. So now to understand this, let me give another example. Again, there are cats and dogs. I like dogs and I like cats as well. So cats and dogs. So over there, let's say we are given a task to a neural network to identify whether this particular image looks like a dog or a cat. So what it will do is, it will take the image, it will break into pixels, and it will then identify by a set of pixels, okay, this type of pixels of ear looks is of a cat. These type of pixels for a tail is for a dog. And it keeps on identifying that. And once you have provided an image, those neural networks, which has different different set of pixels identify and then comes to a conclusion. It looks like this is 75% dog and 30% cat. So once the percentage reaches to a certain uh, threshold, it gives us an output. So that is a neural network in very, very general terms. So what is happening is uh, that in a neural network, there are different, different new neurons, uh, there are different, different neurons and uh, which are storing the information or the features yeah. of, how, uh, of what a cat actually looks like. And then uh, whenever a new data set comes into the, uh, into the play and whenever the generator uh, creates a new image of a cat or a dog, 
uh, it just goes to each and every neuron of it and just like verifies whether it is yeah. right or not and once the uh, overall percentage of it is is in success it just provides you the output exactly right. so there are deep neural networks so like it is a complete complex thing so i do not want to make i mean it i just simplify it for the yeah. people who do not know uh, what neural yeah. networks are okay uh, then there are transformer based models so the transformer based models are a models in which in which basically the data is kind of generated by understanding the it uses an attention mechanism basically what it does in that is it takes a word and then checks what was before like where it was used before in which particular context and in which particular context is being used after the text then it kind of tries to identify what does this mean in general in crux of the matter in crux of this particular concept this is how the transformer based model works they are primarily used for text based generation text based completions so they are primarily used for translations and text generations then we have diffusion models so this is another type of a model in which a particular random image is taken and then we keep on adding new kind of signals to it new kind of pixels to it and we add pixels until a realistic image has been created again there is a complete neural network verifying whether uh, uh, that image is realistic or not so that is a diffusion model and diffusion model is primarily used for image generation and video image synthesis okay then the, we have variational auto encoders so they are a little bit complex so what they does is they basically takes an input they identify the key representatives key features and then they encode that data and then there is a decoder which simply tries to decode that data and while doing so it creates new content why because when the data was encoded some parts of it was lost because it only captured the important aspects of it but when trying to decode it it created and added some new contents to it and then the new image was created so this is also which is used in image audio video content creation and specifically when we want the data the output to be photorealistic or to be like the real images itself only like we are getting with uh, uh, like we are getting with the uh, delhi 2 okay uh, then there are uni models and multi models so uni model is a model which takes only one type of data as an input and creates only one type of out uh, one type of data as an output so those are uni model models and then there is multi model which the name states <laughs> itself only multi it takes yeah. multiple types of dimensions of data processes it and generates different different type of data as an output i wanted to highlight one thing uh, no like it's not like that that only one a tool is can be belong to one model itself only for example gpt4 uh, the newer uh, the newer variation from chat gpt is a transformer based model is a multi model model and also a large language model so it's not that just one model will do everything for you it can belong to different different categories all at once so now if i talk about what is large language models so in a large language models these are the models which are kind of expanding right now as of now and in generative ai that salesforce is bringing is also utilizing it and they are also creating their own llms as well so what is happening behind llm is there is a large and large and large data data set very big 175 billion uh, words and things like that it is being trained on that it is trying to understand the relationships between the words and the pattern between the words words and then it is creating new content out of it so this is the new kind of thing which is going on and it is the one piece which is being used at all the gpts which are kind of you know are getting uh, i would say traction as of now and then we have neural uh, neural radiance fields nerfs so nerfs are also one of the other aspects of models which Not are this nerf right yeah this nerf kind of this nerf so this nerf is basically uh, a model which can generate 3d models for us based on 2d image itself only so you just send in that particular photo of this mobile phone it will create a 3d model of it automatically on its own so these are some of the models which are being very widely used which are very common there are various others as well but we would not be able to cover all of them over here in this webinar i think that's enough <laughs>